Hello everyone, Mike Smell here with another episode of Simulation TV. In this episode of Simulation in Action, we'll again be talking about simulation mold flow. Specifically, we'll be looking at the filling analysis, helping us answer the question, how does my plastic part fill? Today's problem is going to be going back to this drill housing. We've seen this in a couple of our other mold flow episodes, but today we're going to look at the process for performing a filling analysis on this right half of the drill housing. Our key learning objectives for this episode is going to be one, what is the process for optimizing the fill, understanding possible filling related problems, and then ultimately how do we set up the analysis and how do we review the results. So let's take a quick look at the filling process. And this is a pretty complex diagram, but we just want to take away a few simple things. So when we look at the fill, we have a bunch of different components. We start with preparing the model, selecting the material, defining the gate location, selecting the machine settings, and then ultimately running our analysis. Now, when we start to review the results, we could possibly encounter some problems. And what are those kinds of problems? You may see these now and wonder how can you fix them? Well, you may have things like short shots or poor filling pattern, air traps, or high pressure requirements. So the filling process is really the, the most important part of the injection molding analysis. This is the start. Any subsequent analysis that we might do, such as cooling or packing, are still going to have problems if our initial filling is incorrect. So in this video, we're going to be talking about just the process for setting up the fill analysis. And if you have any questions about the gate location or the molding window stuff, we have videos for those already available on Simulation TV. So let's go ahead and get started with this analysis inside Inventor. Here we have our entire drill assembly. And we're going to go ahead down here and open up just the housing of this drill. You'll notice this is a multi-body part inside Inventor. And we're going to go ahead and hide the left half of the housing as well as the internal motor component. Now as we look at this uh, geometry in more detail, we can see that we have some pretty common plastic features such as ribs here in the handle and bosses up here in the main body where the uh, housing will be screwed together. Now we'll go ahead and move into mold flow. You'll notice that we're starting here with a file that's already set up that's named gate location. Well, we've already ran the gate location analysis and a result that comes out of the gate location analysis is a new study file with the predetermined gate location or the recommended gate location already defined using the same mesh settings, material, and process conditions that we've used from our gate location analysis. If you're not familiar with those parts of the analysis, I would recommend that you watch the gate location or molding window analysis videos. So, if we were starting this from scratch or if we weren't sure about our analysis type, we see here it's defined as fill, but we can access the ribbon where we see analysis sequence And we can see that we have a number of different analysis types. So we can choose fill or any of the other types of analyses prior to moving forward. Now, once we've set our analysis type, again, as I mentioned, the material and all of the process conditions are set. We want to look at, is this the best gate location, even though we are assuming that the prediction from mold flow is pretty good? Well, if it is not, or if we were starting this from scratch, at this point in the analysis, we'd go up to the ribbon and click injection locations and then simply pick a node somewhere on our model where we might like to have our injection location. In this case, we were adding one here to the edge. And if we wanted to add multiple gate locations or if we didn't like that, we could simply select it, click delete, and add repeated gates just simply by collect, clicking different nodes on the model. Now, we're going to go ahead and stick with this kind of gate location here on the exterior of the part because putting that deeper gate location in the face might require some more complex tooling. So we'll give this a try just to get started and see how the results come out. At this point, as we mentioned from our previous analysis, we have already had our materials defined as well as our mesh and we're going to stick with the default processing conditions. Now, certainly the material type and the processing conditions are going to change the way the part will fill. So I would definitely make sure that we are looking at setting these prior to running our filling analysis. At this point, we're ready to run the analysis. 
And now with the help of a little bit of video speed up, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the different results. So the first thing we'll look at is the filling time. And we'll notice here that we have a very nice contour plot that shows us from blue being the shortest time to red being the maximum time. Now we remember that our injection location is here at the center of the drill housing. And we can see that at the bottom exterior as well as the top exterior is where our maximum fill time is. Now when performing a filling analysis, we want these to be fairly balanced. If we were finding that the bottom was filling much, much sooner than the top, we might want to adjust our filling location. Looking at pressure at VP switchover, again switching from velocity to pressure during the filling process, we want to make sure that this is within the specifications of what our machines can handle. Switching now to temperature at flow front, we can see that we have our initial melt temperature at our injection location, and then looking at how the temperature cools as it moves away from the injection location. Next here, we'll pick our plot for pressure, and we can see that during our filling time how the pressure changes. Again, checking against uh, our machine requirements. Now we're looking at air traps, and we can see where these are at, and try to validate whether or not these are going to create cosmetic or structural problems. The last thing we'll look at here are weld lines. And again, we'll look at the locations of the weld lines and try to decide whether or not these weld lines are going to create structural issues or cosmetic issues that we might want to change. Now, if we find that we have any issues with our filling analysis, we could either one, go back to CAD and maybe adjust thicknesses. We could look at changing a new gate location, different material type, or different process settings. The last thing we'll do here is switch back to fill time and from the results menu, we'll go ahead and animate this and look at what it looks like to see this part filling. So to wrap it up, that's about all there is to setting up and running a filling analysis. Now ultimately, there are a lot of more detailed things that we can set along the way for our analysis. If you want to look at those in any more detail, feel free to look at the gate location analysis video or the molding window analysis video. So in summary, what I hope you can take away from this video is that one, the filling analysis is the most important part of the injection molding process. We've identified possible problems due to poor filling. We've looked at the process for performing a filling analysis. And then we've reviewed some common results that we might want to look at to verify that our filling process is indeed successful. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at the SimSquad.